Today, we are building out our coverage of the Winter Olympics being hosted by Communist China, a nation controlled by the Chinese Communist Party, sticking up and continuing just stacking up grave human rights abuses after human rights abuses, genocide against the Uyghur Muslims, as it's been called, oppression of people of other faiths, and of course, what about the coronavirus cover-up? So there is so much happening right now, and it leads us to this question, uh, Dr. Roberts, why does China get the honor of hosting the Olympic Games? And of course, as we're gonna talk about, well, how has the Biden administration dealt with this and how should they have dealt with this in holding China accountable? My name's Tim Desher. I'm the co-host of the Heritage Explains podcast. And joining me today is Dr. Kevin Roberts. He's the president of the Heritage Foundation. He's, uh, he has uh, kind of given Heritage and hopefully he's gonna give conservatives around the country a mandate to expose China for who they are and the devastating consequences of their Communist Party. Kevin, I just want to say, um, it's a heavy issue. Mm -hmm. It's always good talking with you here. I think this is your second time with us, and you've, you've done a lot around the building already to cast a vision for how we deal with this. But as we do this today, I just, I just wanted to thank you for being here and handling this really tough issue. H happy to be here. I mean, I, I guess I should say, I wish we didn't have to be talking about this. That's sort of the point of our conversation. But just sort of quick headline up front, Tim. Yeah. It's really important that Americans understand that the Chinese Communist Party is the threat. It's the defining battle of yeah. our age as Americans. That's, yeah, absolutely. And, and as we continue this broadcast, we're gonna, we're gonna nail down into that mm -hmm. a little bit more. As a special programming, programming note though, it's kind of a special thing. We're joined with a live audience today, the Heritage Foundation interns, or as we call them, the young leaders. They're here joining us. And uh, just like you, the online audience, which we really appreciate you tuning in, they're gonna be submitting questions. Uh, many of them are actually handling issues mm -hmm like this in their day-to-day -day here at the Heritage Foundation. So hopefully they can give us a unique perspective as well. So uh, for the interns who are uh, tuning in, we look forward to hearing from you. And to our online audience, if you have questions about the Olympics, China, how conservatives should be viewing this, please submit the questions. It's how this show works. You drive it. So we need you. And also, if you do type a question, let us know where you're watching from. How's the weather there? All that stuff, we love to hear from it. But, but Kevin, jumping right in here, as we see the pomp and circumstances of the opening ceremonies coming, coming up here, um, you know, we cheer on our fellow countrymen and women who are, who are great, fine athletes who are gonna you know, go for the gold, essentially. But I want you to kind of cast a vision for us. What should we be thinking about as we see these ceremonies happening? Well, the first thing I would say, Tim, is let's not watch the Olympics. Turn mm. them off. Wow. And the only part that we should watch is the part when our American patriots are there representing our country. Yeah. Because those athletes did nothing to deserve being part of a, a game that should not be happening in Beijing. Mm. But the second thing is, let's talk about this. I mean, one of the things I've been struck by is almost the unanimity of opinion among Americans, whether measured by polls, are measured by just talking to people in, in neighborhoods hmm. that they think it's it's ridiculous it's unjust that the chinese communist party gets to be featured and not just by hosting the games but by all of the propaganda that yeah. they're they, they're going to have at, at, at their disposal hmm. but the third thing is talk to people about this that this is something that never should have happened Unfortunately, we can't go back in time and undo what has been a pretty weak decision <laughs> by our presidential administration. I'm sure you want to talk about that in a yes. little bit. Yeah. Yep. But finally, what I would say, and I just want to be really direct about this, make no mistake, in spite of all of the challenges facing America, that the single greatest thing we have to fix in the 2020s is our addiction to the Chinese Communist Party. Wow. It is unparalleled in American yeah. history. These games, while problematic and a challenge, give us the opportunity to clarify that for people, and that's what the Heritage Foundation is going to be doing every day at the games. Yeah, you know, we've, 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 we've covered it at great length uh, here at the Heritage Foundation, the incredible genocide mm -hmm. that's happening, gross human rights uh, uh, violations, abuses happening in China to Uyghur Muslims. Mm -hmm. we, we hear Uyghur Muslims, Uyghur Muslims. It, uh, and it's something we gotta continue to highlight. Mm -hmm. um, and so I wanted you to hone in just a little bit more on what, when we say human rights abuses, so we say Uyghurs, we say all that stuff, what does that mean? Why is it so egregious? And, and, and how is it happening? Sure. 
it will be hard in just a minute or two to highlight everything <laughs> that the, the CCP, the Chinese Communist Party, has done. But just some, some headlines. The first is, in this country, thank goodness, mm. we get really worked up when religious liberty is, is abridged in, mm. any, in any respect. In China, that is, that's the rule. So the exception would be if anyone of any faith enjoys religious liberty. In the case of the Uyghur Muslims, these people are treated not as second-class citizens, but not as citizens at all, mm. by a regime that really fits in terms of history with like 4,000 BC than it does 2022. Mm. And so on the, and this last point is really important for people to understand. Whether you're a Uyghur Muslim, whether you are someone who is ethnically Chinese and you're abiding the Chinese Communist Party uh, mindset that you not go to a particular church or belong to a particular faith, you're given a social capital score, oh, which gosh. dictates literally where, whether you can leave your house. I was reading a report last night that the Chinese have used technology so well, that is so effectively, but to really nefarious ends, that they are, based on your, your COVID health score, can determine whether you got a red light, which means you stay home, mm. or a green light, which means you can go about. Here in Washington, D.C., it's bad enough that we're dealing with these ridiculous passport mandates, right. but that pales in comparison, as awful as they are, to what the Uyghurs have had to experience. Mm. And it's funny, you know, folks, as we, um, and, and I'm going to have uh, Phil link to this, uh, we did a couple episodes. Mm. Uh, we know a young lady here living uh, mm -hmm. in Virginia whose mom basically disappeared That's three right. years ago, yeah. hasn't heard from her since, thinks she's maybe arrested, but really, these are the kind of things that are happening. Children being separated from their parents, yep. uh, and then maybe maybe being uh, killed, maybe being imprisoned. We just don't know. We don't, we don't know. And, yeah. the, and that's the, the thing that right now is a very, very a crucial moment with these Olympics, as you shine a spotlight. Mm -hmm. This is not a spotlight to highlight China, and to highlight all that they're doing, and to have great uh, opening ceremonies. Mm -hmm. This is a chance and an opportunity, and I hope we can talk about this mm -hmm. just a little bit more and how we can do this, uh, maybe at a state level, maybe around the country in our communities, how we can shine that spotlight and turn it right on the Chinese Communist Party and what's mm -hmm. happening in Xinjiang. Yeah, ab incredible. absolutely. And yeah. I, I've got some, some ideas that, yes. uh, of course, our heritage scholars are already working on yeah. that we're really going to be trumpeting using the Olympics, because they are happening, mm. as an opportunity to clarify that these have to be priorities for all of us. Yeah. Yeah, so, so we, we talk about this being an opportunity to hold uh, China's feet to the fire. Um, my question is, and, and, and we'll get into this just a little bit more, but I'm really fascinated about, we see, you know, Nike sponsoring the Olympics, and we see, you know, all of these companies, these, you know, American mm -hmm. companies um, making a profit off these Olympics mm -hmm. and, and trying to capitalize on it. And, mm -hmm. and while we're all in favor of the free market, we're, I'm just curious, maybe you can shine a little bit of light on it. What is... What is a fine line to draw there? Is you know, how do we respond to this instead of just sanctioning it by sponsoring and you know, yeah, well, look, we, money? I think most Americans, even a lot of folks left of center, appreciate that free market principles are part of what, what constitutes the American dream. But the other part that constitutes the American dream would be liberty and, and freedoms that are upstream from the free market. Yeah. So in other words, the way to think about it is the rule of law, the civil society, the freedom that our founders set in motion here in the United States from natural law is what gave birth to this free market society. Hmm. And therefore, when we have regimes like China who are exploiting our free market principles against our national yeah. security, China and their willing accomplices, Nike, many other American yeah, companies, right, unfortunately, yeah. Yeah. actually are not exercising free market in the way we understand it. They are violating the very fundamental aspects of what makes America, America. Mm. And so a good way to think about this, let's say that you happen to be kind of skeptical, you're, you're really focused on the free market, that's all good. Right. You say, why would the Heritage Foundation talk about abridging the free market? Because it's a national security threat. This is what we did in the Soviet, with the Soviet Union in the mm. 1960s and 70s. This is what we did in the 1940s. Right. It's all good when the United States occasionally has to stand up against evil in the world. Mm. And my point to all of you watching is, all of us have been asleep at the wheel, me too, until mm. the last few years. And, and regardless of what you think about President Trump, one of the great legacies of his presidency was that he clarified for us that this is the problem facing America probably for the next century. Mm -hmm. I'm just hopeful that with good American ingenuity, we can solve it in the next decade. Yeah, yeah, appreciate that. Uh, we got a lot of people uh, online watching. Uh, Margaret's mm -hmm. watching on YouTube from Canada. Margaret, thanks for joining us. Got a lot of people uh, tuning in from all around the country. 
Um, really interesting question here, though, from one of our interns. Uh, Joshua Willis is an intern in policy promotion. Joshua, thanks for joining, man. It's uh, great to have you on. How can the U.S. do a better job of combating Chinese espionage? Gets to the national security angle here, while at the same time being welcoming to Chinese citizens contributing maybe to our universities or maybe to our civil society here. Sure. By, thanks, Joshua, for that question and for your, your service to Heritage. Great question. By clarifying the threat from the Chinese Communist Party, and clarifying that's who the problem is. We love the Chinese people. Chinese culture is beautiful. In America, we honor that, of course. Sure. And there, there are a series of policies that we need to enact. The first thing we need to make sure of is that the, the Defense Department, the CIA, actually are enforcing the laws on the books <laughs> regarding Chinese espionage. Yeah. And I'm, I'm chuckling out of a little bit of frustration or a lot that I'm not sure that's happening. But the second, and I'll, I'll get to some others later, Tim, but that's directly related to Joshua's point, yeah. is that we have tens of millions of dollars being spent by lobbyists in this town, mm. in Washington, by Chinese companies. So if you want to attack Chinese espionage, how about we first say that it's illegal mm. to take a lobbying contract on behalf of a Chinese company mm. that's doing military and intelligence work on behalf of the Chinese Communist Party? It's a direct national, yeah, absolutely exactly. direct national security threat. And I was talking with one of our experts here, Dean Chang, yesterday, uh, just kind of getting briefed on this. And he brings up the point. He said, how many athletes are going to go over there, open up their phones, and then every bit of it will be infected with spyware, right. malware, whatever where you can put on a phone. Right. And what is going to be done with all that information? That is a very legitimate concern. Obviously, yeah. if Dean is saying it, you know that it's legitimate <laughs> it's true, and yeah. it's right. Um, <laughs> we're, we're, we're laughing because that's just very true, but yeah. obviously it's, it's not a laughing matter. Hmm. This, is, this threat from China, hmm. from the Chinese Communist Party, threatens every person on this planet. Yeah. We cannot say that enough in Heritage. Yeah, and we're going we're gonna to pivot to uh, the Biden administration mm -hmm. here in a second, but I, I saw a really, really um, good question in social media, and, and, and I'm not expecting you to answer this thing entirely, but the question is how Is that China your way of saying short answer, Kevin? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to make sure that you... <laughs> You're the boss. I can't tell you what to do. You just got to do what you got to do. You I'll, know? Take, I'll take the cue, my friend. <laughs> okay. but, but, but it's just a good question because this is where people are at. How did China get so powerful to begin with? They're a communist nation. You know, it's a very, very incredible thing how mm. this has become such a big thing. And, of course, we could talk about the Belt and Road Initiative. We yeah. could talk about <laughs> all this other stuff that they've done. But it really is just an incredible uh, thought uh, process to go through. So succinctly... Yeah. I can say uh, two things that really drove that and accelerated this growth. The first yeah. is the legitimate investment, this is decades ago, by American companies in China. Mm. And there you're talking about the population. Mm. And some great efforts in, by both Republican and Democrat presidents in terms of trying to appeal to the Chinese market, but also appealing to the Chinese government then in power to expand liberty and, and rights. That obviously didn't work out, but they were well-intentioned. But the second is... And this is what attracts, this is amazing to say, this is what attracts some people like the CEO of Nike to celebrate China, that their totalitarianism, their centralization of, of power, especially in the economy, makes it more efficient to do business there. Yeah. And the Chinese Communist Party has really exploited that. We've got to reject that entirely. entirely. I mean, from the root and recognize that from this move, uh, moment forward, whether it's a Republican or Democrat in the White House, it is unconscionable for yeah. an American president to say that we ought to be doing business with them. Yeah, it's funny, I, as, as we look at what is happening here in D.C., we've got a couple, uh, bill, uh, we've got a big bill uh, mm -hmm. that's being debated right now on Capitol Hill, American Competes. Um, we've got um, mm -hmm. some posturing from the White House, but I wanted to hone in on the White House. We saw, I think, I think we saw Lithuania come out um, leading on this issue before the U.S. had a stance. We saw Great Britain. We see them taking a lead in holding China's feet to the fire as we talk about, if we can say that. What, what kind of signal did it send for, for Biden to respond the way that he did to this, to the, to the Olympics in general? Yeah, well, and I, look, I lament saying this. I'm a conservative. I, yet, all of us here at Heritage respect the office of the presidency. We, we pray for President Biden. But, so yeah. I lament saying this. He has been so weak on every policy and so wrong. But the one that's going to have the longest lasting effect is his weakness on China, his weakness in reference to the Olympics, 
there should have been a total boycott of these games. Hmm. We should not have a situation where our athletes are even there. Yeah. That's terrible for them. I mean, we, we love for them to have that experience, but hmm. terrible decision that the Olympics were even there. But I want to very briefly connect some dots yeah. for, for our viewers. Biden's weakness on China is related to Biden's weakness on Ukraine. Our scholars here also lament that probably in the next 48 hours, the Russians are going to invade Ukraine. Right. And that's both of those are directly connected to not just the feckless, but rather unjust withdrawal from Afghanistan that cost both American and Afghani lives. Mm. These are stains on the history of America. We, we, I can't underscore that enough. And therefore, we have to be thinking about not just the policy side of this, mm. And I mean this in a nonpartisan way, because hopefully there'd be some Democrats who would agree with this. <laughs> yeah. In the political sense, we need to put people in seats in Congress in the U.S. Senate who understand the threat from China and who are going to hold the executive branch, branch accountable for the mistakes they're making. Yeah. Jonathan H. is an intern in government relations. Jonathan, thanks for watching. Hey, uh, he, he's kind of getting to a point that I wanted to, to cover with you as well. These games are going to come and go. Yeah. You know, we're going we're gonna to have the opportunity here again to, sh to, to move the spotlight. China is shining on themselves and move it to show the where they don't want That's us right. to see. But what happens after the Olympics? This is going to come and go. You just talked about Russia's going to do their thing. China loves that. They mm -hmm. love seeing that. Where does this go after the Olympics? We need to harness that anger that Americans have over the Olympics. Yeah. Harness what you will learn over the next few weeks from Heritage and other groups who are, who, as, as Tim points out, turning that light back on the Chinese Communist Party into some discrete actions, and I'll give you a few. Hmm. The first is call your member of Congress and tell them, do that today, by the way, call them and tell them to oppose the, the Competes Act. Hmm. The, it was a bad version in the Senate we opposed. Our friends over at Heritage Action are not only opposing it, but they're key voting it, which means we think it's deplorable. Hmm. Uh, probably no Republican votes for that in the House. Hmm. We're trying to get some Democrat votes over so that that doesn't happen. Why is that important? Because basically it, it conveys that Congress is doing something, but in fact we're making the problem worse. Yeah. You can read details about this on our website. But the second thing is we need to make sure... Just let me stop it. Yeah. Philip, can you link to that right now? I just want sure. to make Thanks. sure we get that so people online can, can, can see that coming up in the show notes. I'm sorry to interrupt no, you, that's great. please you, go ahead. You yeah. interrupt me anytime. Yeah. Okay, great. And, uh, <laughs> I, was, I was in a meeting about that before coming here, so that's, yeah. that's happening. Great. But the second thing I would say is make sure that your member of Congress, regardless of their political party, understands that we have to be passing bills mm. that forbid Chinese companies from being on our stock exchanges. Mm. Because um, this kind of goes back to two questions ago. How did this happen so quickly? American money has helped it happen. And mm. look, in the early days, I'm just gonna give people the benefit of the doubt and say those were with the best of intentions. We all thought that China would come around to the American way of thinking. We really misassume some things about the Chinese communists, mm. and that is their willingness to be totalitarian. So we've got to be putting policy behind these political postures. Yeah. Linda on Facebook, how can the, quote, leaders of our government not address the cruelty of the Chinese government? Here we go. Look, at the, we, we know the Competes Act is only going to make them more powerful because it takes competitive advantage away from us mm -hmm. uh, in so many senses. So how, how can leaders uh, g get a little bit more into that holding China accountable our leaders yeah so I've given you two or three policy prescriptions there's another one that actually I think is low-hanging fruit this comes from my experience in higher ed and I'll be really clear we want people all over the world to come to American universities yeah this is not about Chinese students what this focuses on is that a lot of the research money on military and intelligence related contracts wow. is intelligence that in research that gets to the Chinese Communist Party we could forbid that today. I mean, Congress could decide that this is such a nightmare that those laws could be passed today. Mm -hmm. Is that likely to happen? Probably not because of all of the, the long history that the Chinese communists have in buying off people in this town. Mm -hmm. And so we need to make it impossible for American political leaders to do the wrong thing on China. But other world leaders need to take a cue from America. Mm -hmm. And it is wonderful that the leaders of Lithuania and Britain are taking the lead, but I can almost assure you that if they were sitting with us here today, that they would say they're expecting the United States of America to take the lead. Yeah. Uh, another intern question, how do we keep up the momentum of activist action against the Chinese government? Uh, crimes considering past attempts, uh, like Hong Kong. Yep. How do, how do we keep, uh, as citizens, and, 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 and this is another thing, because as I know you came from, from Texas, you came from the States. And um, uh, as we 
kind of think about ways that not just here in Washington, this is going to take a huge nationwide That's effort right. at the states. It's going to take local local governments, local. We need to look at this. The the uh, the um, programs and colleges that's funded by China. I mean, this is a big deal. It's huge. Um, so maybe from your perspective from the states, give us a little bit as how um, states can can push back against this. I mean, maybe it's not letting China buy land next to a U.S. military base. Uh, who knows? Or, I don't know. But what you or, or oil, oil and gas fields. Wow. Which, which yeah. you know, being from a oil rich state yeah. uh, and, and, and it's not to make people rich, but it directly leads to American prosperity. Yeah. That's a national security problem and it should be disallowed. And mm -hmm. that happened both under Republican and Democrat administrations. But the way we keep the pressure up at the state level actually is pretty easy. I immediately go to education because yeah. I'm an educator. Every state through one mechanism or another controls the curriculum of its schools. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. Right now we are teaching kids that communism and socialism are okay. And mm -hmm. what has happened is that our students, with the best of their own intentions, are coupling that with comments they're hearing from NBA stars, NBA team owners, Nike CEOs, people they admire because of their success. And they're saying, well, China must be okay. China's okay. Chinese people are awesome. Yeah. The Chinese Communist Party is our blood enemy. That's what we need to be teaching in schools, because one of the reasons I'm so passionate against communism is being a son of the Cold War and understanding that you would not want to be alive in the Soviet Union. Hmm. None of us would want to be alive today under the control of the Chinese Communist Party. Hmm. Every American student needs to understand that. It's funny, is, is just an aside here, is, is, um, as I've <clears throat> traveled around and been to former communist nations, yep. I, I go to church in these nations and um, you know, maybe 30 years ago they were communists. It's not fail. Every single Sunday, the pastor mentions communism yep. to the congregation. And I believe that's because they weren't in business 30 years prior. They weren't allowed to be in business. Right. This is exactly what's happening in China. This is exactly what we sanction when we support this, when we yep. allow this to happen, when we perpetuate this kind of culture. And so um, talk just, just, just a little bit more as we kind of think about wrapping up here. Mm -hmm. Ways that we can, um, so, so NB, you know, NBC or, or, or networks that cover this, go beyond boycott here. Yeah. You know, because we say, let's boycott it. You know, let's, let's boycott products made in China. That only goes so far. Mm -hmm. Just give us just a little bit more as to how we can hold them accountable. Well, I agree with you. And you've um, done a great job already, but I just yeah, want to, you know. All good. Yeah. I, I think boycotts are important. I agree with you that that's not enough. Yeah. But don't buy anything that's made in China. I mean, my four kids know, don't, don't come to me and say, Dad, can I buy this if it's got that label on it? Buy it from any other country, frankly. Hmm. But the second thing you have to do, and I, and I know you expect this of me, the president of the Heritage Foundation, to say this, so I'm going to say it. We have to harness our anger, our willingness as individuals not to buy Chinese-made products, our willingness to call our congressmen, if, we're, if we are willing to do that, into policies we support. We have to forbid in the United States the investment of American money in Chinese companies that are oriented around military and intelligence. Mm. We need to forbid that lobbyists in this town are actually doing business on behalf of shell companies for the Chinese Communist Party. And we also need to forbid that our universities are researching in mm. shared contracts with the CCP. I know that those go, that goes beyond what we can do in a store, but Americans have to exert that pressure yeah. on our elected officials for them to understand it. The Heritage Foundation is going to be banging the drums on this until it's fixed, but we need your help in order to exert that pressure. Yeah, that's great. And as we, as we kind of bring this thing in here, um, JD is watching from Colorado. Looks like we've got John watching. A lot of people tuning in out there. Thank you so much for being with us today. There was one question that came in and they wanted to know if you've ever ridden a bobsled or a luge. Is that, is that, a, is, wait, actually that was my question. Nobody, nobody wrote that in. That was the answer, my question. The answer happens to be no, <laughs> Okay. but uh, I picked up enough speed going down a, a ski hill that it scared me. You are a, you are a one man, five person bobsled team. For yes, sure. yes, yes. That's that, what you are. That's exactly yeah, right. Yeah. Well, folks, I wanted to thank you so much for tuning in today. Uh, it's a serious topic, a lot going on here, a lot to consider as you watch these games or don't watch these games, as we say, as we, as we read about it happening. Keep in mind our role as citizens, as statesmen and women, to keep freedom, keep, keep this alive throughout the world that is ours to do. 
Um, and I wanted to say a special shout out to the interns who are uh, watching, giving us uh, some questions today, giving us some insight. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you for being here. And if you out there watching online somewhere, if you're interested in maybe being a young leader, maybe being an intern here at Heritage, we're going to link to uh, the, the site where you can go and apply. We'd love to see you here. We'd love to have you contributing to the movement. Kevin, thank you once again for being here. It's so good to have you. Thanks for everything you're doing. Yeah, absolutely. Now let's go win. Now let's go win. Give me the gold. <laughs> I want the gold. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much.